In this video, I'm going to teach you two ways to make a mead mosa. So let's get started. So we all know what a mimosa is. We know it is champagne, generally, and um, orange juice. But what's a mead mosa? I think um, a mead mosa would be a really interesting mead to make, and there are a couple different avenues to uh, get to one. So today, in this video, I'm gonna teach you the two ways um, that I feel comfortable making it. Are there more ways to do it? Yes, but there are two main ways I feel comfortable. The first option you have to make a mead mosa is to make a cocktail version, meaning you can take a normal mead, a traditional mead, um, that you end up carbonating, because you need carbonation, and you just add orange juice in, in a glass separately. So for example, if I had, you know, this was mead, I would put mead into there and then do whatever equal part orange juice, just like a cocktail, super simple. So that's option number one, and I'll show you how to do that. Option number two is to actually make a mead mosa in a bottle. What I mean by that is to actually take and um, make your mead it, like one thing. You open up the bottle, you don't have to mix anything, you already have a mead mosa. That one's a little trickier, but we'll talk about how, uh, how to do that. So, let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna need, first of all, a few things. You need sanitizer. This is Star Sand. It is a brewer's grade sanitizer. You're gonna need a hydrometer, super, super important. Probably something to stir with. And um, you're gonna need two glass carboys or a glass carboy if you're just doing one of these. Uh, some water and of course, honey and yeast. The yeast we are using today is the Lauvin EC1118. It is a wine yeast, also a champagne yeast. Gets up to 18%. Super strong, super great. Uh, you can also use like a scale if you have that and those various things. So that's what you need. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna split this video into two different things. It's gonna be the same video. I right now am gonna teach you how to do the mead mosa in a bottle, meaning that uh, it is one entity. I'll put a timestamp right here. If you want to see the mead mosa that is a cocktail version, um, go ahead and you know, look at that number and, and uh, click ahead in the video and find that. But here's how you make a mead mosa in a bottle version. We're gonna go ahead and move this over. We don't need two uh, carboys right now. And the recipe we're using really for both of these um, is we're gonna be using two pounds of the, this is clover honey that I got from Glory Bee, which is an online source. We're using uh, roughly about uh, three quarters to seven eighths of a gallon of water and two grams of yeast. So, and of course, orange juice, um, which I don't have my exact designated amount of those things yet, but you'll see them there. Let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we need to, um, we need to mix in and make our traditional mead. So this is probably the most important part, and uh, this is what is gonna make it a mead mosa. I'm gonna pour a little bit of my water in here, and uh, then I'm gonna pour my two pounds of honey in, and we're gonna shake this thing up and stir all my ingredients. I have mixed my ingredients together. Now we need to take a gravity reading to find out um, how, how high the gravity is, which tells us how uh, high ABV this mead will be currently. So let's go ahead and do that. This is where you use your hydrometer. Okay, so using our hydrometer in a tube like this or anything that's tall enough, you can float your hydrometer in the liquid and that will give you a, uh, it'll float to a certain point which tells you how high your gravity is. This one is currently at 1.063. Now I know you can't see that super well, but uh, that's the current gravity. Now that we know our current gravity, we can calculate how high uh, ABV this will be. The thing with um, calculating with knowing your gravity, it's very important to be able to not only just know how high your ABV will be, but also to help you troubleshoot if something happens. If your mead starts to fail for some reason, you can look back at the gravity reading and use it as a measurement to maybe figure something out. So I just poured that back in there. Um, I did a few minutes ago take and put my two grams of yeast into here, and then I put water on top uh, to rehydrate them. So they are gonna do, we'll uh, mix those in here in a second. but. The next step is actually gonna to be to put those in. Let me go ahead and explain the process of the bottling and how you uh, do a mead, a mead mosa in a bottle. Here are the two ways you can carbonate this. 
First one would be to force carbonate in a kegging system. The second one would be to bottle carbonate. Let me first unpack the kegging carbonation or force carbonation. Basically what you would do with this mead is you're going to mix your ingredients together, let everything go through the primary fermentation. You would stabilize the mead with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite to stop any further fermentation. Add your orange juice in and then you can basically, you know, to taste as much as you want, put that into a keg of some sort that you have and force carbonate it, meaning you go through the kegging process, you pump CO2 in and it carbonates it inside the keg. That's a pretty easy option if you have keg stuff. The option I went with for this video is bottle carving. Bottle carving is a little different. You let your mead go through the primary fermentation. Then I added, and I'm adding the orange juice in the secondary, the yeast re-ferment, so I have to make sure to let them go through their whole process. Because we want this to be sweet, we have to add a non-fermentable sugar. So I use erythritol, which is a non-fermentable sugar, to back sweeten. And um, from there I add priming sugar, which is fermentable by yeast, and I bottle it. When I put the priming sugar in, the yeast kickstart back, kickstart again, they create the carbonation within the bottle and that's what makes us a bottle carbed mead. So those are your two options. Um, let's go ahead and jump now to after the primary where you'll see me go through that process. Okay, the mead mosa in a bottle is now out of the primary. Now it's been a long time, I say out of the primary, it's been literally 50, 50 days since I've done anything with this thing. So fermentation took roughly about two and a half weeks I believe and then it's, I believe it's finished. It's been 50 days so I'm pretty confident it's gonna be finished. Our current gravity is one point, ooh, we're a little bit below. We're at 0.998, so just a little bit below 1.000. Started at 1.063. We're looking at roughly a nine and a half, I'm gonna guess, I'll put it right there, percent mead. Now that's not including our orange juice. So let me get, get a quick taste test of this real fast. And then um, we're gonna talk about the orange juice side. Yeah, this is a solid, just straight, regular traditional mead. Still a little bit young, clearly. It's got some heat. The floralness from the honey's still there, which is nice. Um, I do think it needs some pop, and most of the time I might put some acid blend or something in here, but we're gonna add the orange here in a second. Um, definitely a little boozy. Uh, that'll mellow out over time. Could do with some carbonation. It's got a good mouthfeel though. Feels pretty full bodied. Let's talk about their orange juice now. Orange juice is gonna be, uh, we're gonna have to put orange juice in the bottle. Now there are two ways I could carbonate this ultimately. One is through the kegging operation, and I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it through a bottle carving method because I think that might be easier for some people. So you can do this in a keg where you stabilize, add all your ingredients in, carbonate the keg. I don't wanna do that this time. I think I might have said I was gonna do that earlier. I have here, um, this is, frozen orange juice that I'd bought, and I am going to put to taste however much I feel like I need to get this to be the mead mosa taste. Now, I'm probably gonna go overboard with it because there is gonna be re-fermentation. I am gonna leave the yeasts that are here at the bottom in the mead, and that's simply because I want to allow for re-fermentation, and I, there's no point in me transferring this out because then I need the yeast anyways. I need them to well, I don't really want them to re-ferment on the orange juice, I just know it's gonna happen, so that's okay. Let me go ahead now, and I, again, I'm gonna do this to taste. So I'm gonna mix, pour some in, mix, pour some in, mix until I get it to the orange juice mead combination. All right, I have added a grand total of about roughly eight ounces of the orange juice concentrate. Now it's concentrate, so it's stronger, and that's okay. Um, now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take and let this set, but first of all, what does it taste like? It's honestly a perfect, in my opinion, mixture of the orange juice and the honey character. We get that traditional mead flavor, but we're not getting um, more mead than orange juice. Now, uh, I do believe that some of that orange juice flavor is gonna ferment out because this is gonna re-ferment. We just added sugar in. So I'm gonna tell you the gravity reading, the new gravity reading here in a second, but I mean, I really like it. It does taste like a lot like orange juice, which is mimosa. So, and carbonated, this would be even better. 
So let's do this. Let's talk about the gravity reading. New gravity reading is 1.004. We went from 0.998 to 1.004. We started at 1. whatever 0.063. Here's what the new gravity is. Well, here's what the new ABV will be depending on if the yeast actually ferment through all of the sugars they have. This is going into secondary fermentation. After secondary fermentation, we are gonna probably need to add some sugar to back sweeten this, but we can't do it with real sugar because that will add more um, ABV, essentially. It'll add more alcohol content. So we're gonna use erythritol, which is a sugar, non-soluble, non-fermentable sugar. I'm gonna put this on here. It's gonna do its re-fermentation thing, probably re-ferment out all the sugars it can again, and then we'll come back, taste test it, back sweeten it, add some priming sugar, and then bottle it, and that will carbonate in the bottle. So, here's the next step. Here we are with our bottled bead mosa. Two weeks later, this thing has obviously settled. There's been some uh, orange that has settled at the bottom, and it, it's gotten stirred up a little bit. It was pretty clear before I moved it, and then because I moved it, it got a little shaken up. We know for a fact it's done because I saw it, but also the uh, gravity reading is 1.000, meaning it's chewed through the previous sugars. There's some slight bubbling from degassing going on here. That doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and taste test it for one to see how the orange preser preserved after um, the secondary fermentation. Not super bright. You can definitely tell it's orange though. I think that we've lost the brightness of the orange, the pop, the zest of it, so to speak. Well, I think what we're gonna do here is hit, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of acid blend to help it be a little bit more citricky, citrusy. So I'm gonna get some of that here in a second. But we're also gonna hit it with some more sugar, but this is non-fermentable sugar, this is erythritol. Um, now I don't wanna stir everything in with all of this yeah, stuff at the bottom, basically. I don't want any sediment. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack this over real fast. All right, so here's what I've done. I have added roughly about 10 tablespoons of erythritol, which is this right here, and you'll see it on the screen. Um, this is kind of what I did. That's 10 tablespoons, which is quite a bit, and I meant to take a, I did take a gravity reading after the erythritol. I was at like 10, 1.004. I believe, um, but to be honest, I've put a lot of mead or a lot of sugar into this, so I was kind of, it's just a lot going on. Then I added about um, one quarter teaspoon of acid blend, and I was doing this all to taste to get to the sugar level I wanted, or the sweetness level, and then the acid level, so a quarter teaspoon of the acid blend, and we just added 26 grams of priming sugar, which is gonna be fermentable by the yeast. So this is what will allow us to actually have carbonation. So here's what we have, here's our end result. I mean, this thing right now, it tastes like an orange mead, but that's exactly what we want because it is still very honey character E. It has a lot of, uh, bite because of the acid, because of the orange, the brightness of the honey is there, and I think it's perfect. With some carbonation, with lots of carbonation, hopefully, it's gonna turn out to be even better. So now, let's go ahead and carbonate this bad boy. We're gonna bottle carb, like we had talked about, so I'm gonna go ahead, I am gonna go ahead and um, bottle everything, and then cap it, and we're going to allow the yeast to eat on the sugars from the priming sugar, which are fermentable. The erythritol that we used right here is non-fermentable. You would have noticed some activity in your mead with yeast waking up and freaking out about new sugars if the uh, sugar was fermentable. This is not. But priming sugar, the yeast were kind of like, hey, we're awake again. So they'll wake up again, they'll ferment. Let me go ahead and bottle everything and then I'll be right back. Forgot to mention, original gravity 1.063, after the primary 1.000, after the erythritol 1.004, oh my gosh, numbers, after the priming sugar 1.006. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what that math is, but here's my ABV for this mead um, after it ferments or after it uh, carb carbonates, you know, all those things. That's it, that's my ABV. So, 
here's after some carbonation, here we go. It's been about three weeks since we started the bottle conditioning of our Mead Mosa. And of course I have my Mead Mosa here. Let's see if it has carbonated. Let's hope it has. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Okay. Nice, nice. This is super exciting. Let's see how it pours. Oh yeah, that's carbonated. Y'all, I'm excited. Holy cow. Look at this thing. Very carbonated, which is exactly like what we want. Champagne, champagne-esque. Let's taste it. Oh, that is, that is good. Yeah, you, you get the orange popping through because we've retained, well, we don't have a lot of sweetness from the orange, but we have the orange flavor. The sweetness from the erythritol, the carbonation from our priming sugar. Dude, this is amazing. It's got a nice body because of carbonation, but it's also got a, um, I mean, it's just a overall good mead. It tastes like a mimosa, but it does have the honey character bolstering the um, floral warm side of honey that makes a mead a mead. Plus, of course, orange juice. Oh my gosh. I can't, I, this, this is the way I'm gonna do it from now on, to be completely honest. I like, I think both options are great, but this is the one I'm gonna do because this is all in one package. Here we are, ready to drink. I have a bunch of more bottles of this. This is becoming a standard for my house, for sure. Okay, I'm sold. Dang. Y'all, go make this. Go make either version, either the cocktail version or the bottle version. If you wanna know how to make the cocktail version, of course, there's that video. This is the same video. So, this thing is awesome. Carbonated super well. Bottle carbonating works. You can also do this in a keg, but um, I chose to do a bottle version in this is easily accessible. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe, of course, is there. You can check out um, the other side of this video. Man, I've enjoyed this quite a bit and I am gonna enjoy this tonight for sure. And I have more bottles to make in the future. Here's how you make a Mead Mosa cocktail version. This one is really kind of simple and I like this version a little more. It requires less math. Um, it's just kind of simpler. We are gonna make a traditional mead and then add some extra flavors. Uh, so it's not gonna be a traditional at that point, but we're gonna take and mix in the following ingredients for this, a, about three quarters to seven eighths, seven eighths of a gallon of water, two pounds of this clover honey, which is gonna, what's gonna make this a mead, um, two grams of Lauvin EC1118, which I have here, opened um, from another thing. So first things first, uh, I'm gonna weigh out two grams of yeast and we're gonna go ahead and rehydrate them because rehydrating your yeast helps quite a bit. Let me go ahead and do this real fast. The reason we add two grams of yeast is because two grams is plenty to get through this one gallon um, mead mosa we're making. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix in our ingredients, like I just said, so our water and our um, honey. Let me go ahead and do that. We now, after finishing mixing things, need to take a gravity reading, which means you use your hydrometer to measure the gravity, which tells you your ABV. So let's do that. So now we float our hydrometer in here and we see where it lands. Right now it's at 1.070, which means that we are roughly, I think, a 9.2% mead. So we take our gravity reading. You can use an equation to help you figure out your possible ABV percentage, assuming that the yeast completely ferment through everything. That's what I mean by 9.2%. I'm assuming, assuming that the yeast eat every single bit of sugar they can, which would leave us with a 1.000 gravity, ultimately ending at about 9.2, I think. I'll put the actual correct answer right there. So that's that, that's our gravity reading. I'll make sure and write that down because that's very important to know. Now let's go ahead and take and add our yeast into here and we will, um, that now that they're awake, they have some action going on. They know what's, what's going on. We're gonna put them in. 
With our yeast introduced, this thing will start fermenting probably within the first uh, 12 to 24 hours. The Lauvin EC1118 is a champagne yeast, really, really good. And it will uh, chew through every single bit of sugar we have here. It gets up to 18, which is 18% ABV or like 1.15 gravity, which is massive. So um, there's a huge, or not 1.15, 1.1, like three or something. Anyways, that's a very powerful yeast. This will eat through all the sugars. Let me explain the rest of this process. After this finishes fermenting in the primary, we're gonna move it to a new container. That will sit in there for about two weeks-ish, at which point we are going to take and um, really we're gonna add some more sugar on top of this and bottle it. So this thing will be dry. Um, when you put some priming sugar into uh, a um, mead like this and then you bottle it, it starts to uh, bottle carbonate. We want the carbonation there because if you think of champagne, it's carbonated. Champagne plus your orange juice is what makes the mimosa. And that's what we're going for here. But we'll get there when we get there. I'm gonna throw an airlock on this, write down my information, and we're gonna let this go through the primary fermentation. All right, so this is the cocktail version, finished fermenting. Now it's sat for quite some time. It finished fermenting after roughly about, um, it was three weeks, essentially, just for everything to happen. The original gravity was 1.070, and the final gravity is 1.000, and I'll show you that now. So our final gravity, floating the hydrometer in here, 1.000. We're at roughly, I think if my math is correct, like a um, 8 point, or excuse me, 9.7%, possibly, ABV mead. Um, I could totally be wrong, but, uh, anyways, you'll see it on the screen. So let's take a get a, a taste test of this. Here we go. Ooh, yeah, that that EC one 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 eight definitely it kept a lot of the honey character, which is really nice. This is super smooth. It is um, about fifty days old now. Ooh, that's fantastic. You can absolutely, by the way, expedite the process after it finishes the primary. Go ahead and rack it off. Do all these things. But this thing is has a really nice traditional mead uh, taste. Wow. Okay. So now, here's what we're gonna do. Normally, I don't like to do this. I like to rack off the yeast, but we need them for um, carbonation. So we're gonna bottle carbonate this one since we're gonna be creating a bottle, bottled traditional mead that's carbonated. And then the other one, of course, is the other way. So um, what we're gonna do, super simple. We need to add some priming sugar to this. So that's what I'm gonna do real fast. Since the yeast are here, they will, with some new sugars, start to re-ferment, which then creates our um, actual carbonation. So we're making our traditional mead in the bottle. I am going to put a, it is 28.35 grams of this priming sugar in. This is a priming sugar that you can use for uh, lots of beers. It normally is graded for five gallons. I'm just dividing by five. So you can use other sugars i could use honey i could use those things however honey gets to be a little bit sketchy you have to get the exact amount of honey otherwise you over carbonate and we don't want to do that so um like i was saying i'm not going to rack off the yeast i'm actually going to um well what i'm going to do is uh take and rack this off and then the bottom of this yeast i'm just going to pour part of it into the carboy so let me go ahead and actually i'm just going to put the priming sugar just on i don't really care um, I mean, I care, but we're going to go ahead and put our 28 grams in and then we're going to be ready to bottle this today because this with priming sugar, it's going to be, it's going to start, um, carbon, well, the yeast are going to wake back up. So, all right. So I put this priming sugar in the yeast, get excited because there is more sugar. So it foamed up some, that's okay. Um, now we're going to mix in the priming sugar and then we're going to go ahead and bottle this. So let me go ahead and do some mixing. All right, we're ready to bottle. I have my bottling wand and my racking cane and all these things. And um, you need a few things as you bottle. I need to raise this, elevate this up real fast. All right, so I just take, use my bot, my auto siphon, bottling wand, all this stuff. A um, couple things that's important. This is not very clear anymore because I've mixed up the yeast. I need the yeast though, so I can't kind of I can't get rid of them. Um, because they're helping me carbonate. Did I need as much yeast as was in there? Probably not. 
but this will end up being all right. Um, the priming sugar will activate the yeast again and they will uh, ferment and they will create carbonation in these bottles, aka bottle carving. Then we are gonna take, once this is carbonated in roughly about two weeks, we will take and add, or we'll open a bottle, pour it into a glass, mix in some orange juice, and we have ourselves our cocktail version. So let me finish bottling this real fast. Okay, bottled, capped, I put a label on for the moment, and we're gonna let these carbonate. Now you could have done this, or you can do this, if you stabilize it and do it in carbonate in a keg, that's an option. I decided not to do that with this one for ease and my sake. So um, let's see what happens after this bottle carbs and then we make it to a cocktail. It's been about two weeks, two and a half weeks roughly. Let's see, let's see if this is uh, carbonated any. I hope it has, come on. Ooh, pop, I don't know if that was just from, ooh, I see some carbonation. Yes, perfect. There is definitely some yeast at the bottom of this thing. So clearly that, uh, has happened. Okay, let's let's make a mixture for a mead mosa. So let me go ahead and open up my orange juice because again, this is the cocktail version. So you would need a carbonated mead and some orange juice. Let's pour ourselves a good portion of carbonated mead. Yeah, there we go. Got ourselves some carbonation, very nice. And here is some orange juice. That was just a guess on how much orange juice to add. It smells like a, meat, or a mimosa. I think my ratio of orange juice was too high. Might take you some time to play around with it. Ooh, carbonation is not super strong. Obviously we've added orange juice, which cuts down on the carbonation and mimosa in general doesn't have I mean, some do have insane amounts of carbonation depending on how much champagne you put in, but this one doesn't have lots of carbonation. That is good. So there's like, um, of course, this brightness and this um, very fruity tropical side from the orange juice, you know, not surprising. But there is this like warmth from honey that, cu uh, that cuts through. And it's like, um, it's very earthy to me, as opposed to just a regular, mimosa you would get this bright taste of champagne which is generally just a it, it kind of gets hidden within the um the acidity found in uh, orange juice this has some earthiness to it that's a little bit different yeah that the carbonation it could be more you know i wouldn't be offended if i had like just a little more carbonation however it is still very refreshing very like mimosa-esque and um, I don't have a great ratio to tell you because in truth, I feel like I used, I pro mm, I'll tell you my ratio roughly. I probably used two thirds mead, one third orange juice to get this mead mosa. And um, it's fantastic. I can definitely imagine drinking this thing in the morning on a Saturday morning, wake up, go to, you know, go to lunch, brunch, whatever you could do there and, uh, have one of these. This thing's fantastic. I've, I've really enjoyed getting to make this. Of course, I have the other side of this coin, which is the bottled version of the Mead Mosa. So if you want to check out how to do it in a bottle, there's that. But this is great. Highly, I highly recommend you try to make this yourself. I think you'll enjoy it. I've definitely enjoyed it quite a bit. So um, this has been the Mead Mosa. Um, this is my label. I was going to put it on it and uh, I haven't got it printed out yet. I, it is getting printed currently. So when I make more of these, that is what is gonna be on the screen, on the label, or excuse me, on the bottle every time. So go check out the bottled version. It should be somewhere here. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Amid Mosa. Um, go check out both sides. I hope you have a great day and Cheers.